The 2012 Lasker DeBakey Clinical Medical Research Award honors Roy Kahn and Thomas Starzl for the development of liver transplantation, which has restored normal life to thousands of patients with end-stage liver disease. Andrew was going to die. And I, I wouldn't believe it. I wouldn't accept it. I, you know, I used to feel that I'm sure that something could make him better, you know. Refusing to accept the inevitability of patients dying, Thomas Starzl and Roy Kahn envision the potentials of transplantation despite the skepticism of the medical community. There was a period of, uh, of hostility um, uh, about the whole enterprise. I think there was a, a uh, era of pessimism that lasted for uh, a long time, a, a couple of decades. Those words, it can't be done, uh, were uh, imprinted in my memory. In the late 1950s, Starzl's success transplanting livers in laboratory research animals fuels his belief that liver transplants are a clinical possibility. I actually worked out the uh, details pretty th thoroughly by the end of 1959 in dogs. Still, there was no uh, known way of preventing rejection at that time, so uh, many people construed this as a... Uh, 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 kind of a frivolous uh, uh, technical exercise. Investigating chemicals known to block immune responses to foreign proteins, Kahn experiments with six mercaptopurine, fortunately unaware of other research results. Oh, he said, you know those six mercaptopurine experiments? He said, don't do them, it doesn't prolong skin grafts. I said, lucky I didn't speak to you earlier because it does seem to prolong kidney grafts. So that was really the beginning of chemical immunosuppression. Roy's initial contribution um, in his work with immunosuppression of kidneys built the foundation for that interest in um, immunosuppression in general. Despite modest advances, organ rejection continues to sabotage transplantation until Starzl and Kahn's research identifies important drugs that change the immune system. The best way was to start with azathioprine and intervene with steroids only when rejection started. Armed with this new insight on immunosuppression, Starzl initiates a pioneering kidney transplant program in Denver at the University of Colorado. And basically showing that kidney transplantation had leapt from a very questionable experimental procedure to a legitimate clinical service. Uh, albeit uh, uh, still a flawed one. Using the dual immunosuppressive regimen he'd found successful with kidney transplantation, Starzl proceeds with a liver transplant program. The first one was on the 1st of March, 1963, and the last five failures uh, uh, was, on, uh, was in October of 1963. So uh, we closed the program. In 1967, Starzl reopens the Denver Liver Program, having improved both surgical procedures and strategies for using known drugs for immunosuppression. We uh, began to produce successful cases uh, with survival exceeding one year. Immunosuppression remains the ongoing problem, but it's not until the late 1970s that Kahn makes the long-awaited breakthrough and we thought we ought to do a clinical trial with cyclosporin. But Sandos were very reluctant. They didn't want to uh, get into immunosuppression. I went back and they said, because of all the fuss you have made, we'll let you do a small clinical trial. Roy became aware of the drug cyclosporin, used it very quickly in animal models, showed it was an effective immunosuppression and almost the same year used it in some humans. With ongoing research, side effects are minimized through newly identified agents with improved results. Starzl introduces tacrolimus, and Khan contributes rapamycin and Campath, continuing their quest, striving to better patient outcomes. The purpose of the practicing physician is to gather all the information and try to understand what the big picture is. Um, it, uh, that is the power of research. 
Public recognition finally proclaims the landmark success of these two scientist surgeons. But for Tom Starzl and, and Sir Roy, their rewards are their patients and the many thousands alive today who had no option for life without a liver transplant. I was terrified, <laughs> absolutely. Um, and we went to the chapel to pray while he was having his transplant. And we, we, we actually met Prof on the stairs. He says, I've got a beautiful liver for Andrew. And here we are. 28 years later, what he does and the pioneer operations he's done have made so many lives better and saved so many lives. To uh, see a patient who had uh, a prognosis of, that was hopeless, who was clearly heading for a, usually a rapid and unpleasant death, and to see them restored to normal life, particularly children, this was something particularly, especially gratifying. The extent uh, to which we succeeded uh, vastly exceeded my expectations. I knew I had to do it because it was the only thing that was going to keep me alive. I was one of the first 40 to ever be done. Dr. Starzl is my guardian angel. I was diagnosed at seven months and I was transplanted at 14 months. I wouldn't be here without you, so thank you so much. Thank you.